exciting, friends. I'm so excited for you to be here. I'm going to be talking with romance author Sarah Sutton. So let's jump into the interview. This is going to be so much fun. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button so that other people can find this content. Let's jump in. You could just start out by kind of like just introducing yourself for people that might not know who you are and tell about your books and kind of your publishing journey and everything. Would love to hear that. Yeah. Um, I'm Sarah Sutton. I have published six books since January of 2020. I write in the young adult romance um, genre, the contemporary genre. And I, like I said, I started publishing in January of 2020 after I was dead set on traditional publishing. Um, But it was like July of 2019 where I kind of changed my mind and went the self-publishing route. Um, But yeah. (laughs) Nice. So then um, what made you decide to um, pursue the indie publishing route instead of the trad publishing route? Since I know you said you were deciding trad but then you decided to do indie (laughs) well growing up I feel like um I was under the impression like I feel like a lot of people um still are under the impression that self-publishing isn't as good as traditional publishing yeah and I was in I live in a smaller town or smaller area so like that is kind of self-publishing is not a thing and it's not it's not viewed as impressive as traditional publishing. Hmm. So for the longest time, I thought that was the only route that I wanted to go. And what actually ended up changing my mind was that I had been in communication with one uh, traditional publishing company for over a year. Like initially I had sent them my manuscript because you didn't need an agent to query with them. Hmm. I had sent them the manuscript and they accepted it. Um, So I was accepted by one of the editors on their team and the editor had terrible communication skills. Um, So like she would take months to reply. Um, And after, um, I don't know, I think it was like three months in the reply, I ended up messaging a a person higher up and I was Mm -hmm. like, so is this person still with the company? And the person ended up not being with the company anymore. Oh my gosh. So the higher up was like, but I'll read the manuscript and I'll let you know if we're going to still keep it or if we're going to pass on it. And they ultimately ended up passing on it um, in July of 2019. And the very same week that they passed on it, um, Sarah Cannon, who is a really, really well-known self-published, self-published author, she launched her self-publishing course. And oh. I was like, well, I guess because I after waiting over a year, um, to publish yeah. the book. I didn't want to wait anymore. Mm-hmm. So we it's kind of crazy it. too that they, you know, someone accepted it. And then since they weren't with the company anymore, then it got not accepted. And it's like, yeah, um, I'm sure that that was kind of an emotional roller coaster for you a bit then too. Yeah. And it was funny because since that person had used to take so long to respond and to emails, I would every day obsessively check my email thinking like they were going to respond that day, but turned out there was like months later and like, it was, it was not a um, great experience, but I, it it led me to where I am now, which is very exciting. Oh, good, good. And you're enjoying, and you enjoy doing the indie publishing. You enjoy doing like figuring out the covers and and everything yourself, having that control. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Wonderful. Well, I'm super happy to hear that. And I'm glad that you're where you're at today and that you went the route that you went because you've been super successful this way, I feel like. And it's just been super exciting for you. (laughs) Yeah, it was definitely not what I expected at all. Like I... I did not expect, like, I, I expected to sell this to sell 50 books my first year. So like, yep. it's just crazy. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, super exciting. So congratulations on that. I'm pumped for you. Awesome. Okay. And so how many, uh, how many books was it that you said that you've published so far? Six. Six. Okay. Wonderful. And um, can you tell us a little bit about your first series? And then also, can you tell us a little bit about the upcoming series that you're working on? Yeah. So the first series is called the Love and Fenton County series. And that is the first five books that I've published. Um, The sixth one is a Christmas standalone. But the first Love and Fenton County series actually didn't really even start off as a series intentionally. Um, 
what made me change is because I actually ended up changing cover designers after What Are Friends For, which is my first book. Okay. And so um, books two and three, which is Out of My League and If It Room Fits, had the same kind of scheme to them, like um, layout, Mm -hmm. which it's the current book covers now. And when I did Can't Catch My Breath, which is book number four, that was also going to be the same kind of layout. And I was thinking like, well, would it make sense to put them in a series? Because I also have heard that romances sell better when they're grouped together in a series. Oh, Um, Readers like binge through the whole series instead of like, you know what I mean? Because there's that intrigue and stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so starting that was kind of an accident, but it, it's there's not really a common theme in all of those books because it was an accident. It was not planned. Right. Um, but I, I think they're all consistent with like the feel good, you know, fun romance and they're all in high school all in the same county. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's not as well thought out as I would have liked to, which is why my next series that I'm going to publish I feel super confident about because it is more of that kind of interconnected, like there, there's common like recurring themes and stuff like that. Yep. Um, but what it follows is that there is this list in this high school, it's called Brentwood High. Okay. Um, the list is like the most likely to list. Oh, so cool. people are voted most likely to never have their first kiss and stuff like that. I so. love that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That is so cute. I just love it. I Oh my goodness. And how, how many books is this series going to, series going to be? Potentially seven. Oh, I am so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I completely understand. Like, um, over mother's day, this is kind of off topic, but your dog barking made me think of that. Um, we actually were driving along this like road. I live in North Dakota, so it's very kind of like rural here and not many cities and towns in between um, the small towns. Anyways, we're driving along the road and we see this little puppy on the side of the road. And we're thinking, oh my goodness, like, does it have an owner? It's a beautiful puppy. Like, I'm, so we look to see if she has collar and tags, none. And she looks oh like God. she's been mishandled and like abandoned and, and like abused. She was really scared of us. And oh. she, after about half an hour, she finally came to me. And so we currently have <laughs> a rescue, a little puppy. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love it. (laughs) Right. So she's not the best listener at the moment, but we're working on it. (laughs) I love that so much. Yeah. So hopefully she gets along with the cats well, but so far, so far she's been getting along with our cats pretty well. So I'm not extremely worried, but Mm -hmm. yeah, that just made me think of it, which made me go off on a bunny trail. But anyways, I thought I could share it with you. (laughs) No, yes. I loved it. I love that. Yeah. I love your pictures of your dog too. You guys have one dog, right? Or is it two? It's two, but it looks super similar. So, okay. okay. I was, I was wondering because I know sometimes people can have a couple dogs if they're the same breed, are they the same breed? Yes. Yeah. Cool. What kind of breed is, are your dogs? It's a Malshi, so like a Maltese oh. Shih Tzu. Oh, pretty. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. I love dogs. I love cats. I love animals. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So seven books you said. Yes. Okay. Well, that is just exciting. And are you going to be doing like a little scavenger hunt for each of the title reveals or are you going to do something different for those? I was, I'm not sure. So book number two actually has a pretty long title. Okay. So if I were to do the scavenger hunt again, I'd probably give like each person who signs up two letters. Oh, okay. Um, just that way there's not like 30 people. You right. can find 30 different letters, you know? Yeah. Um, But I did think it was a really fun way to do it and a really interactive way with the readers. And so I think it's a viable option in the future. Oh, yeah. No, I I think that's a wonderful idea. Like, I think that's just um, how everyone can be involved and everything gets everyone really excited. And you go from like one page to another person's Instagram page to another one. And it's pretty fun. (laughs) Oh, it was super fun. And it worked out so smoothly too. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad it, I'm glad it went well for you. That's just great. Um, okay. Then let's see here what the next question is here. Okay. So, um, let's see here. Oh yeah. What does your typical writing day look like, um, for you? Okay. It's, it kind of varies every day, but I feel like right now I do really well with writing kind of more 
in like the early, no, no, late morning, early afternoon time, which okay. is very wild for me because I'm definitely a night writer. Um, mm. But recently I've been juggling like with client work and stuff too. Oh, cool. So uh, generally I will be writing in the morning and um, into the afternoon. And then at night I'll do my client work and stuff, but it's literally just me sitting in the same spot for hours, just writing. <laughs> <laughs> that works perfectly. So are you, yeah. would you say that you're a pantser or a plotter? Um, probably more yeah. plotter more of a plotter. Yeah. Okay. That's another thing that's changed over like the course of everything. I definitely used to be a pantser. Okay. Yep. And since kind of like becoming more of a plotter, have you found that putting the stories together is easier for you? Um, cause I feel like I used to think I was a pantser too, but like, I felt like I didn't have any direction and it always like my brain was like, ah, this isn't working yeah. out right but then when I figured out that I was more of a plotter like the story just kind of smoothly fit together better <laughs> yes that's exactly how it is for me like it fits so much better and it takes away like if I don't have a plot of where I'm going yep. I will just sit and stare at my computer and like stare at the word document and be like <laughs> Like, and I'll, and I'll like try and daydream and figure out where the plot is supposed to go but it like yep. takes out so much time that I could actually be writing if I had planned it out in advance. Right. But. It's um that dreaded staring at the blinking cursor, right? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's awful. I know. I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. So um what would you say is the most difficult thing about working for yourself as indie author slash writer? What is the most difficult thing that you think for you? I think definitely is like the motivation to do things mm -hmm. lately. My energy levels have just been in the pits and I don't know if it's just cause like not enough vitamins or whatever, but okay. like, I literally like the, the, the urge to nap is so strong all the time, you know, and I actually yep. still live with my parents. So when okay. I hear them out walking around, I'm like, Oh, let's go see what they're doing. You know? Yeah. So it's just that like motivation and dedication to sit down, like tune out everything else yep. and actually write. Like I love the idea of writing, but it's so hard to get my butt in the chair. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Yeah. And then what would you say is the most precious thing about it? What is the thing that you love the most? Uh, I think it's actually watching the story come to more of its final form. Mm. Like right now I'm editing book two for like the millionth time. Like, I don't know, the fourth time I'm going through and editing it without having written the ending. Ooh, and yep. yeah, it's just been, a, it's been a time and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you got but, this. You got this. Don't worry. I, I know how it feels. It's, it's awful, but you got this. Thank you. <laughs> But it's like that seeing, seeing how the story is like finally coming together and the character arcs are finally like starting to feel like actual people and actual plot events and it's engaging, you know? Yeah. It, I think that's the part that is the most like exciting and fun to me is I but, love drafting, but I love seeing it like get better, you yeah. know? Like, cause it makes me feel better as a writer too. <laughs> like it was rough, but it's getting so much better. Yeah. It kind of comes from that one moment where you're like, um, when you're earlier in the stages, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, is this even any good? Should I just throw it out the door? And then once everything starts coming together, you're like, okay, I don't suck. I am good at this. I'm good at this. <laughs> like yes, <laughs> it can really make your imposter syndrome disappear after. <laughs> it's so um, funny. Okay. So when you said that you are kind of a plotter, like, are there any methods that you follow? Like save the cat? Um, uh, story genius, anything that you follow, any craft books that are kind of your go-tos? Yeah, I really do follow the Save the Cat outline. Um, for me, the third act isn't as in-depth as I would mm -hmm. like um, in that outlining method. So, sure. but I do follow that one. And then the Thesauruses by um, Angela Ackerman and oh, Becca yeah. Puglisi, they're like lifesavers for me. Those Amazing. are my go-to craft books. Yeah. So, so good. Oh my word. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. And then, so when it comes to writing romance, what are some tips and tricks that you have for people that want to make their romance shine off the page and seem realistic? I think one of the big 
factors in romance, at least for me, that I find that I like as a writer and as a reader is making sure like the emotion is really well described because really romance is all about building that emotion and building mm-hmm. the chemistry and stuff. Um, so one thing that I always recommend when people ask for tips about romance is that when you're writing like a scene that is supposed to be like impactful, like the two, like the main character and the love interest are supposed to have like chemistry building in that scene. Mm-hmm. It's always a good idea to detail out like all the senses, like mm-hmm. sight, sound, mm-hmm. taste, yeah. smell, hearing and stuff. Yep. Because that really, you're painting a very clear picture and you're getting your reader, like if you detail out how your main character's heart's racing, your reader's heart is gonna race, you know? Right. So emotion detailing detailing out emotion is one of like the biggest keys to me about writing romance oh wonderful yeah that that's great information very Mm -hmm. helpful um yeah so have you ever thought of writing any other genres too or has it just mainly been the romance that really is like yep that's that's me (laughs) right now it really is romance even before so I grew up writing more like fantasy paranormal books oh yeah because that was what I normally read from like middle school to high school yeah um but even in those books I remember when I was writing them, I'm like, I hate this world building that I'm doing, but because I want to just get back to the romantic right. plot, you know, so kind of writing romance now takes away, it takes out that like complicated world building that I wasn't really a huge fan of. Right. Um, but in the future, I feel like it's not, nothing's off the table. I have been playing around with even tampering into like the more new adult genre, because right now I'm writing Ooh. young adult. Yep. Um, but even branching back into paranormal or fantasy, it's not out of the picture, but right yeah. now, especially with a seven book series coming up. Oh yeah. I, I love where I'm at. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I always like to ask that question. Cause it's like, I know, like for me, I like to read many genres and I do like to write like, well, I'm currently in the rom-com genre and then I really do like fantasy too. Um, Ooh. so I will come back to that, but I haven't been in it for a while but yeah um yeah that is super cool and everything oh my goodness so exciting oh and then um you have the first one of the second series done um but the the second one is that one currently being writing written is that the one you said you're currently writing yeah the first one like like almost to the proofreading stage. I just have okay. a few more copy edits to go through, but yeah. right now I am focusing on book two. And okay. Trying to get that at least finished to okay. send off the betas and stuff. Awesome. So when you are writing a big series like this, um, do you kind of have an idea of what's going to happen each one? Um, or kind of like if, do you have any tips basically, I guess, for writing a big series? Like, I guess it would take a bit of thought and everything. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was back in July, I made like a huge kind of series Bible in my notebook about every single book. So I have like an elevator pitch, I have a working blurb, and then I have all of the plot beats out for every single book, Um, which I don't know if any of that will say that. I mean, mean, some things can definitely change. Yeah. Um, But uh, it's, it's been really interesting so far trying to make sure um like everything is consistent with the timeline because I think that's like my biggest struggle and Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the biggest difference than most interconnected series I think a lot of them don't happen in the same timeline um usually you'll follow a character and then the next character is maybe a few months later or something like that a few weeks later but all seven of my books are projected to happen within the same like month oh so cool I've so uh, one of the things I've been using to keep that straight is using like notion okay. it's it's like the I'm, and I'm sure you could use any other kind of calendar um, planning kind of software or something but for me I use like a calendar little template for every single book in notion and okay. it's really easy for me to like organize um, dates and scenes and football mm-hmm. games and parties and all that stuff oh so um, cool yeah, but it's been, <laughs> it's been a time and a half. I feel like I don't have a lot of tips because I haven't, I, you know what I mean? I haven't really gotten very far into the series yet. Right. But, yeah. um, but still been- though, like to be on the book too, I mean, I'm sure that's really exciting and everything. And um, are they each, um, is each book dedicated to like a different couple? Yes. 
Okay, cool. So kind of like, kind of like the books that you've already written, how they're kind of like almost standalone-ish, but they're yet in the same world, basically. Exactly. Like you're, you'll be able to read every book as a standalone. Yeah. Like if you wanted to read book three before book one, you definitely will be able to. Cool. Okay. Um, so yeah. Perfect. Awesome. And then I love to ask every writer that I interview this question, and I know this is going to be a hard one, but if you could pick one of your book babies, which book is your favorite? Oh, okay. I know it's not a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a fun question though. Right. Right. Um, so based off the six books that I've published. Yeah. I think, oh, a really hard, right? I'm sorry. Really I'm tired hard, of being this. <laughs> I, I really do love um, the book Two Kinds of Us, which is my fifth book that I published, which is the final book in the Love and Fenton County series. Yeah. I feel like that one, it fits more of the kind of story stories I've been wanting to tell. Mm -hmm. um, it feels a little bit more sophisticated than um, the other ones. I mean, not like the other ones weren't sophisticated, but it just feels like the themes were... I don't know. It just, it touched my heart in a really weird way. Right. And it also could be because if the broom fits and can't catch my breath, both followed really heavy themes. Oh, okay. um, each contained like a parent death. Oh, and yeah. so in two kinds of us, I was finally able to not deal with parent death. Right. Death. So it was a little bit more fun. And just, I just, I think it was a nice like way to end the series too. So perfect. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's cool. So is that the one that you would recommend people to go out and read first? If that was their, if, if that was like the number one book they had to read of yours, would, would that be the one or is there a different one that you would say people should start with? I, people really, really love out of my league and I really love out of my league too. So yep. I might recommend that one first. Although if they plan on reading all of them, yep. I do recommend starting with What Are Friends For and reading it in series order. Sure. Just because there yep. are a few little Easter eggs littered throughout. Right. That's cool. That's awesome. That's cool that you've got some Easter eggs planted throughout. That's really cool. You like your Easter eggs, girl, and your scavenger hunts. <laughs> I do. I so do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's wonderful. Okay. Let's see here. Um, Okay. So, um, oh, and then for your um, publishing company, did you end up doing like an LLC or did you end up doing a, a just a sole proprietorship or when you set up your publishing company? If, if I might ask that question. Yeah. Yeah. I actually did do an LLC. Okay. Was that difficult for you or did you just pay someone to do it for you? It actually wasn't that hard. I believe I went through my financial um, accountant person to set mm. it up because they okay. knew about it and I had no clue. <laughs> um, but they were really helpful and they walked me through it. And like it wasn't, it, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Sure. But it was also reassuring to have somebody else walking through with it. Right. Cause it's a, cause it's a, when it's including like laws and stuff, that's scary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> laws and money and suing and like, I mean, of course, potential, uh, you know. You most likely will not be, but all of that stuff is scary, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not in the writer realm of everyday um, stuff that you deal with. <laughs> right. and, I, and I actually didn't realize how much, like in Sarah Cannon's self-publishing course, she talks about um, building an LLC or the other kind of options. Cool. But it, it does really take some pressure off because like, like you said, heaven forbid, somebody sued me. Mm -hmm. um, they sue the LLC and not me personally. So right. like, I'm You're not safe. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really important. And I don't think a lot of authors know that. Oh, um, so yeah, that is so important. Like that's, I'm glad that you have that set up and everything for yourself. It just, cause I feel like then it just gives you a little bit more of a, um, it can calm you a little bit more knowing that, okay, I'm all safe. This is all good. Most likely that'll never happen, but just in case, at least right. we're good. <laughs> yeah, I am such an ang anxious person. So that what if would have driven me crazy. Oh, yes. Same here. Yes, same here. I completely agree with you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. And then let's see here. Um, do you have, let's see, um, 
what would you recommend for other writers who want to do what you're doing right now? Choose the indie route. And let's say if you could give them five homework assignments, basically telling them, okay, this is what I would do differently maybe than what you did or something that you did that worked. And um, what are five things that you would recommend them to do um, to basically um, be able to work for themselves as a writer? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so for one is definitely establish like your social media because mm -hmm. that's like the most important thing to me because if you don't have social media nobody knows about your books no one's going to learn about your books right um, and I think something that really helped me and I know it's not possible for some people if they've already self-published but I established my social media pages before I self-published hmm. um, so I built my Instagram and my Twitter profile and I don't, I don't use Twitter anymore but I built those two profiles before I self-published um, and I found that really helpful hmm. yep um, and another thing would be to get a website and newsletter. Um, you don't have to pay for the domain name if you don't want to. I, the thing with me is that when I decide to do something, I go all out. <laughs> so I did buy my domain. I did get build up a newsletter nope. um, and uh, things like that. That's another big one that you hear people talk about, but you really do want to be able to capture if, if somebody loves your book, they need to be able to find you. So you, mm -hmm. when, they, when you release the next book, yeah. um, they can find it. Um, that's wonderful. And so that's two. Shoot. <laughs> I have three more. <laughs> Sorry to dish out the hard questions. <laughs> it's, a, it's really good though. It's really good. Um, and I would say be realistic with the deadlines and stuff and be strict with deadlines. Mm. I get questions. I mean, strict to like, you know, not stress yourself out and be crazy, no. but I get questions all the time, um, about how I'm able to kind of like stick to a story, like how, um, the shiny idea syndrome doesn't drive oh, me yeah. away from my story. And I'm actually at this point now where I can't be distracted by a different book, yep. you know? So I like my self publishing schedule kind of relies on, like I need to be able to be working on one book at a time and in the mm. six month period, all that stuff. So I feel like kind of establishing and being strict with yourself on deadlines to start um, mm. will really help you in the long run because you're going to be able to be more focused on the story at hand, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's really good information, I think. Yeah. Well, and I, somebody had asked me, I think I was at a family reunion and I have a cousin who also wants to write a book, but he just oh, cool. keeps getting distracted. Oh. I'm like, and, and they're like, how do you not like stop and start a new thing? I'm like, I really like, if I wanted to stop and start a new book right now, I don't really have a choice because right. I'm supposed to be launching this new series, you know? And right. Uh, yeah, I do have a choice, but yeah. to for, for it to like, for my career, it would really mess. It would derail up. you more than help you move towards your goal. Like if you launched, you know, series and trying to get that out. So you're needing to focus on that. Totally understand. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> what else would I would suggest? Hmm. This is a really good question, but I feel like I'm blanking. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. Uh, well, honestly, going back to the social media pages, one thing that I tell people because it's worked for me and all of this has worked for me, it's not going to work for everybody probably, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. I find it, I found it helpful was kind of limiting my social media posts about things not writing related. Yep. Um, because for me, I kind of view my social media, like my Instagram page as like my business Instagram page. So I wouldn't necessarily go on there and be like, I'm having an argument with my family this week. You know what I mean? Yeah, because no. <laughs> a normal CEO would not do that. Right. Um, yeah. And if I were to do like a more personal post, like say I wanted to share a picture of my breakfast, mm. I'd always try and tie it back to, oh, Sophia ate this breakfast and out of my week. Have you guys read sure. that book yet? Um, Make it. I found related. that really helpful. Yeah. yeah, that's really good. That's good yeah. information. <laughs> and asking questions on social media when you okay. always have a question in your post, it boosts engagement. So that's really okay. good. Okay. Wonderful. Yep. 
That's great. Well, you know what? You could count those as two. <laughs> Why not? Let's do that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Let me just double check to make sure that I have any other questions. Okay. Yes. The most important one, right? Where can people find you and your books? All right. Um, I'm actually, so for social media, I'm on Instagram at Sarah May Sutton. For YouTube, I'm over there at author Sarah Sutton. And then I'm also on Facebook at Sarah May Sutton. And my books are available um, on Amazon in ebook, paperback, and in audio. And they're in Kindle Unlimited. Yay. Perfect. Awesome. I will post all of that, all those links in the, in the description, the video description down below. And um, this was so much fun. I absolutely love chatting with you, Sarah. It was just uh, absolute joy. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you enjoy it too and everything. And I'm super excited. <laughs> Bye. Bye.